A nation that's booming. And changing radically. China is facing immense challenges. And a wild animal is helping the country to master them. What a beast! Amazing! I didn't expect so many the number of the crosses from the wild yak. Lanzhou, a metropolis of western China on the Yellow River. An endless row of skyscrapers more than 50 kilometers long. The city has four million inhabitants, four times as many as 20 years ago, and it's still growing. Western China will be the future home for millions of Chinese because the east of China is overpopulated, an enormous challenge. Demand for beef in particular is rising all the time, and a very special animal is expected to provide it. The Chinese scientist Han Jianlin is an expert on the animal, which also attracted the German scientist Horst Geilhausen to China. The plan is to use it as a source of nutrition in China's booming west. The animal is the yak, and the meat from these highland cattle is already very popular in China. The yak is going up because, you know, people believe the yak meat is uh, coming from area on the Tibetan plateau. There is no pollution. There's a lot of natural, you know, mineral water coming from the Himalaya melting snow. And there's a lot of, you know, the even people claim a lot of uh, Say the herbs grow among the grasses, so the yak meat is a healthy, green food. So people are ready to pay higher price. To cater to this increasing demand, the Chinese have a special plan for the yak. Han Jianlin and Horst Geilhausen set off on an expedition through the provinces of Qinghai and Gansu to the yak farm of Datong near Qining. Their journey starts in the metropolis of Lanchu, the gateway to the west. Han and Geilhausen explain the special reason for their journey into the wild west of China. We are heading for Tianzhu in the Gansu region. Our Chinese colleagues want to show us a very special breed of yak. A breed that will demonstrate the current problem. The first yak pastures appear, 3,000 meters up. Ordinary domestic cattle could hardly survive at this altitude. Han and Geilhausen have been invited to attend the last shearing session of the year. The herdsmen own white yaks. Tibetans believe that white yaks are holy animals. They are popular with the Chinese, too, because of their meat and their wool. The animals are half wild. To shear them, the herdsmen first need to catch them. <laughs> the problem, these yaks are hardly larger than sheep. Inbreeding over centuries has degenerated them and reduced their output of meat and milk. To compensate for that, the men keep huge herds. In this region alone, there are roughly 50,000 animals. Infectious diseases can spread quickly, so before shearing, the yaks are also vaccinated. The ladies will come and do the yeah, shearing. They start to cut. Yeah. A man tied most of so I think yeah. Yeah. she's going to start yeah. the cutting of the hair. 
Yes. Yeah, it started. The wool of the white yaks is in great demand. It can be dyed easily and is of very high quality. The white wool has some interesting uses. The long white hair from the tail is sent to factories and used for wig making. And the rest of the wool is very precious, the belly wool. And that gets processed into knitwear because it's almost the same quality as cashmere. For the farmers, the yak is the most important source of income. Here, in the highlands of western China, any other kind of livestock farming is impossible. But the low meat and milk yield of the degenerated domestic yaks will not be able to meet the demand of a growing population. <laughs> that doesn't bother the farmers, though. After the shearing, they play tic-tac-toe, and the one who loses has to drink beer and liquor. <laughs> And while the men get drunk, the women have fun in a different way. and the last yak bull is set free. The herdsmen keep a safe distance. With a yak like this, you never know. The yaks return to the pastures with blue markings so that the farmers can tell from afar which ones still need to be sheared. The journey westward continues. Railway tunnels and concrete bridges point the way and demonstrate the immense effort being made by China to open up its western region and to attract more and more people. The journey takes us to a farm where Chinese scientists are working on the problem posed by the overly small and degenerated domestic yaks. The activities here are so important to the Chinese government that the area is completely off limits. The Datong farm at an altitude of 3,000 meters. And these are the animals that are intended to satisfy China's increasing appetite for meat. Big, strong, hardy, and wild Datong yaks. There's a reason for their wildness. Half the blood of Datong yaks comes from wild yaks, one of the last three remaining wild cattle breeds on Earth. If they keep eating, they come on the farm by the breeding bulls, so they cannot uh, manage all the yeah. demand. We need more. Datong yaks are around one quarter larger than domestic yaks. With them, Tibetan and Chinese yak herdsmen will be able to produce more meat and milk in the future and satisfy the hunger of Western China's rapidly growing population. Hidden away a few kilometers from here is the real secret of the farm, located in a special building. Han and Geilhausen are only allowed to enter it in the company of a delegation of Chinese scientists. The Chinese are very concerned about keeping their facility sterile. Everyone has to wear protective clothing. Then the visitors see it for the first time, a wild yak bull. Magnificent, quite magnificent. Fantastic. 
the other one you can touch, not this one. There's one there you can really put your hands on. And what fine horns he has. My goodness. Those are real weapons. Yeah. Do you have an idea what the weight is? He must weigh around a ton. I'm quite convinced of that. Because he's a nine year old already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Originally captured. Father, wild yak, mother wild yak. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wild, wild, wild. wild yaks are an endangered species. These animals were captured to breed the new efficient yak. To preserve the existing wildlife stock, purely wild yaks are bred here too. That's nice. Every calf likes that. According to my calculations, there are 20,000 to 40,000 wild yaks. Particularly in the Kunlun and Kilian mountains. My country attaches great importance to protecting this species because it's endangered. Because they are so rare, we've only caught a few of them for breeding like this little one here. Bottle feeding them by hand is important. The wild animals should get used to humans and lose their aggressiveness. He's only two days old and already so tall. The calves are like humans. When you treat them well, they feel it. We love them like our own children. When they grow up, they won't be afraid of humans. They know that we aren't dangerous. And then it's easier to get the sperm. Nevertheless, the full-grown bulls are still quite aggressive and nervous because they know what is about to happen. With her odor, a yak cow is attracting the wild bulls. At first, an old experienced bull is set free. He seems calm, but the situation is dangerous. He could attack at any moment. The scientists want his sperm. This bull was also captured when he was still a calf and raised here so he's already reasonably used to humans. And luckily, he cuts right to the chase. After a few moments, the precious wild yak sperm is sent to the nearby lab for a quality check. The number of sperms is high, and they are very active. High quality wild genes to breed new and highly efficient Datong yaks. After their work is done, the wild yak bulls can graze in their mountain pastures. There are 30 of these rare and precious animals. Their descendants will help the Chinese population to thrive in the country's western highlands. it remains to be seen whether the genetic material of these few animals will be enough for further breeding. An enclosure nearby containing Datong yak cows that have already been inseminated with wild yak sperm. The Chinese have already bred one million of these new animals. They 
provide 25% more meat and milk than ordinary domestic yaks. The cowboys get ready to drive the inseminated cows to their summer pasture, located 4,000 meters up, as high as the highest alpine peaks. No problem for the yaks, especially those equipped with wild yak genes. It is the yak's hardiness that makes the Chinese count on them as a source of basic nutrition in the dry and cold high plateaus of China. And that applies in particular to the new efficient Datong yaks. <laughs> Genuine wild yaks have become rare and tracking them down in the wilderness is the objective of the next part of the scientist's journey. The next destination is Qining, just two hours away from Datong by car, a megacity located at an altitude of 2,300 meters. Qining is now three times larger than it was 30 years ago. One example of the speed at which Western China is being settled. The construction boom is immense. From 2011 to 2013 alone, China used more cement than the USA did throughout the entire 20th century. And the yak is omnipresent as a symbol of prosperity and nutrition, essential for this flourishing region. And the plan is for the economic boom to continue. The Chinese government is investing vast sums of money in the west of the country. The journey continues further northwest the countryside grows even more desolate. We're 3,500 meters up. The farmers of Western China keep a total of 16 million domestic yaks, but the meager soil is getting worse. Scientists fear that due to climate change, it will become more and more barren. Since each yak cow provides only about two liters of milk per day, the Tibetans breed them in very large numbers, more than the ground can bear. The consequence of all these yaks, serious soil erosion. The Chinese hope that larger, more efficient, and also less numerous yaks will preserve the delicate soil, like the Datong yaks with their wild genes. But are there still enough wild yaks to breed an efficient and resistant new yak race? The search for these wild yaks continues westward to Subai, a city 1,000 kilometers from Langchu. From Subai, Han Jianling wants to continue his journey into the wilderness, accompanied by local rangers. Finding wild yaks takes time. So first, they have to do some shopping. Equipment and food for an expedition into one of the most remote areas of Asia. <laughs> I'm very excited, you know, because this is the first time to me to really uh, to have a chance to uh, travel into the deep corner of this type of the natural reserve. And really, I'm looking forward to work with people, you know, from the uh, uh, reserve to we really, we are ready prepared to explore the nature in this part of the Tibetan Plateau. So far, the journey has taken them from the city of Lanzhou via Datong and Qining, and across Jilianshan, a more than 6,000 meter high mountain range to Subai. From here, they will enter the wilderness of Yangqi Wan, where the wild yaks are thought to live. Beyond these mountains lies the region of Yangqi Wan, the scientist wants to find out whether there are still wild yaks there, and if so, how many. The expedition begins. The crew loads an SUV and also a military truck, which will soon be playing a major role.
After three years of preparation and negotiations, the Chinese authorities have finally allowed a camera crew to travel into this area and film there for the very first time. Even before the first mountains, gigantic sand dunes created by the desert of Taklamakan further west herald the start of a journey into a bleak and hostile region. They have to travel 300 kilometers eastwards. Han prays for a safe return. Then he and the rangers continue on their way, passing half-wild camels. A final checkpoint, and then the group enters the strictly protected and usually forbidden wilderness. They gain height, too. The valleys of Yanchiwan are located at an altitude of 4,000 meters. The mountains are as high as 6,000 meters. The air is thin. The sunlight is dazzling. This nature protection area is huge. It covers 10,000 square kilometers and has only 800 inhabitants. There are not even dirt roads now. The rangers have to drive very carefully to keep the vehicles from getting stuck. Beneath a 5,000-meter-high mountain, the group pitches camp for the first time. <laughs> Han Jianlin thinks he might have spotted some wild yaks up on a mountain ridge. Tiny black dots in the distance. But ranger Dabuchi Lit waves this idea away. They're not yaks, only horses. The rare animals won't make things easy for the expedition by promptly showing up near the camp on the first day. Finding them is definitely going to be tough. The rangers are very eager to do so. That would confirm the importance of their work as a protection group but the region is vast and difficult to access. The next day, the group visits some nearby shepherds to ask them about the wild yaks. Yes, yes, I've seen some wild yaks up there in the valley. Because you, you can see it's already started some dropping. Uh, we are afraid if it go across the range today, you know, it will be very slippery. So we have discovered the young man. He agreed to go into the valley, bring this domestic yak herd. There are two wild bulls already mixed with the herd. He will bring the herd a bit down. For we can go into the valley, we meet somewhere. We can't do the shooting of this herd with the white bulls. Yeah. This is the plan for today. The horse has not been used for a few months already. She is a bit wild, even to him. <laughs> so he needs to be careful to train him a bit. 
<laughs> I need a few days to get adapted also. Okay, let's get to the car. We follow them. The shepherds ride ahead on their half-wild horses, leading Han Jianlin's expedition to the wild yak bulls of their herd. Around 10 kilometers further on, across country, they find the herd. The horses Han saw the day before are grazing higher up. The shepherd is still trying to get his horse under control. On a hill at an altitude of 4,200 meters, he approaches the expedition again. He has spotted the bull and wants to lead the group to it. From this point, they have to continue on foot. The air is thin, breathing is difficult. Then they see it their first wild yak bull in the wilderness, around 800 meters away. Ranger Wu Ji and Han Jianlin take cover. But it's too late. The bull has already scented the men and runs away. Decades of poaching have made these animals very timid. A second bull follows him, obviously one of his offspring, a cross between wild yak and domestic yak. In contrast to them, the herd of domestic yaks has no fear of humans. <laughs> I didn't expect so many crosses from the wild yak. Normally, you may have two, three in a herd. And here, I look to me, I think more than one third of the animal, the yaks, they carry the wild yak blood at different levels. Because the crosses, they are much stronger in terms of, you know, the resilience or the resistance to the hard condition, particularly over winter. And these crosses they also grow faster, therefore they have a larger body compared to the pure yak. So the disadvantage for the herders, you know, because they are wild, particularly I guess for the F1 cross, the first generation, they have 50% wild yak blood. So when they grow up one year, two years, three years, they know they're wild. They like, you know, going into the wild, they want to join the wild yak herd. In that case, the farmer will lose animal. So the mixture of wild and bred animals can also have negative consequences. What is being bred intentionally at the Datong farm is uncontrolled here and causing problems for the herdsmen, as well as for the wild yaks themselves. Sometime, they went together with some pure domestic yak into the wild yak herd. That will bring a lot of problems, sort of the genetic contamination from the domestic yak to the wild yak. Therefore, I think maybe, you know, because we know the domestic yak, they are not that strong in, in uh, surviving in the hard condition. This may, you know, at the end lead to the problem of a sort of degenerated genetic quality or genetic potential of the wild yak to survive. Even the few herds of domestic yaks living in this wilderness seem to pose a threat to the endangered species of wild yaks. With mixed feelings, Han and the rangers travel back to the camp. On the one hand, they can see that the wild yak's survival is in danger, while on the other, they are glad to have seen at least one of the rare bulls.
That evening at the camp, the shepherds have not yet returned. Together with Ranger Dabuchilit, they set off in pursuit of the fleeing wild yak bull, hoping it would lead them to more of its kind. Yes, they got it. They are heading this direction. <laughs> we made it. And they were successful. They met nine wild yak, the all males, the breeding bulls. On the way back, before they crossed the range, they met a brown bear. It's quite a big guy. When it comes this height, nearly say two meters. So when he was swing, he ran across to them, the one to attack them. So they, he had to quickly to get on the horse run away while he was taking some photos of the bee. At first, the bear trots along unconcerned. But the shepherd's whistling attracts its attention. Then it starts to attack. <laughs> the next day, Wooly G and Han are looking again for the wild yaks the herdsman and Dabuchilit saw the day before. Further uphill, the soil becomes more arid. Burls are watching the men. Climate change has obviously had an impact here and is causing increasingly severe droughts. There was one very long-lasting drought. Being a game ranger, I felt very depressed about that. When the sky is sealed all the time and there's no rain, then wild animals only have a small chance to survive and they're threatened with extinction. At that time, I was very concerned and sad. This is why it is so important to protect the wild yaks and their genetic material. They are probably hardy enough to withstand the climate change, but so far, nobody knows which of their genes are responsible for that hardiness. Suddenly, the rangers catch sight of something. It's the skull of a wild yak bull. It's probably been lying here for around two years. The skull is mummified, meaning it still contains enough tissue for a DNA profile. For the scientist Han Jianlin, this is a real treat. You can identify it by its hair. It's a very old one. 13, 14, 15. 15 years old. <laughs> so often, we cannot find a samples of pure wild yak. You know, if we go to sample in the farmer herd or even in other place which claim they are wild, pure wild yak, you know. But I think in most cases we see there are crosses. People uh, misidentify, you know, these sort of the samples. I think this is really uh, one of the very important samples. I have a plan. I want to resequence the genome of these samples. Most of the other species, you know, the wild ancestors that died out. I'm very excited, you know. I want to really take the samples, go back to the lab 
do whatever I can do at fast speed to get the scientific data out. Han wants to discover the secret of the wild yak's mysterious strength. The expedition moves into a new camp in the eastern part of the nature reserve, old deserted sheds. These were used to accommodate workers of a gold mine until 2013. The workers destroyed the soil, poisoned the water, and poached wild animals. A delicate issue that the rangers don't want to talk about. But as soon as the camera is switched off and they're sitting together cooking their meal, they say how worried they are about the severe threat being posed to nature and the natural habitat of the wild animals. Breakfast, dumplings made from pasta, minced mutton and bone marrow. After breakfast, the group gets ready to drive to a further herd of domestic yaks, which apparently has also been taken over by a wild yak bull. Maybe the group will get the chance to approach the bull. Soon, the rangers catch sight of the herd. And indeed, there is a large bull among the domestic yaks. The rangers suggest approaching the animals in the truck so that Han Jianling and the camera crew can observe and film the wild yak bull from the safety of the truck's cargo area. <laughs> Even the driver is excited. A lot of stories are told about aggressive wild yak bulls. Such bulls have a weight of one ton. Cautiously, the vehicles approach the herd. The plan seems to work out. The herd does move away slightly but doesn't run off. For the first time ever, close-up shots of a wild yak herd seem possible. Little do Han and the camera crew know that things are about to develop very differently than expected. Suddenly, the drivers accelerate hard. For no apparent reason, they chase the animals and separate the wild yak bull from the herd. A furious hunt begins. Han Jianlin and the camera crew are totally surprised and have trouble hanging on to the cargo area. starts to attack, pursuing the truck at 50 kilometers per hour.
him over. Are they crazy? The truck has run over the wild yak. Watch out. What are they doing? Stop it. What a mess. The bull has survived, but the truck continues to chase him. Hun and the camera crew are shocked. The bull is clearly injured. He's bleeding from the mouth. Only now do Han and the crew discover that the rangers had had no intention of bringing the camera crew close to the wild yak to get good film shots. They were far more intent on driving the wild bull out of the herd of domestic yaks. The herdsman standing next to Han in the back of the truck had asked them to do that. It moves faster than a horse. And if it's running towards you... The herdsman had been afraid of being attacked by the wild yak bull when he wanted to approach the herd, so he wanted the rangers to drive it away. Oh. The bull gives up and walks off. The rangers don't think it has been seriously injured. We heard the wild yaks with the truck because the herdsmen cannot do it themselves. The wild yaks come into their herds and molest their cows. The cows are slowly chased away and the herdsmen can no longer reach them. That's why we drove away the wild yak bull using the truck. We need to take such measures. That's just how it is. The rangers don't want to come into conflict with the yak farmers. They hope that measures like these will calm them down and stop them from killing wild yaks, which they once used to do. The survival of the wild animals is important to the rangers, even though the incident with the wild yaks seems to point to the opposite. And on the whole, their work is successful the number of wild animals has increased over the past few years, ever since the region became a national park. Poaching was successfully stopped. Wuliji and Dabo Chilit can prove that using their automatic camera, which they install regularly at certain locations. The rangers are also used to seeing brown bears. For the rangers, this is a sensation. Extremely rare snow leopards, four of them at once. Filming even one of these big cats is like winning the jackpot. I am deeply touched when I see so many different wild species even with the automatic camera. Such precious pictures of the snow leopard. Directly above the camera, a golden eagle approaching its nest. But again, there is a sharp contrast to the beauty of wildlife. The eagle has built its nest out of trash. Even here, in this seemingly desolate region in China's Wild West, human garbage 
has been left lying around. It's a country full of contradictions, with the beautiful and the ugly side by side. But they still haven't found any wild yak herds. The group now has to go uphill, and it can only be done on foot. This becomes too arduous for Han Jianlin. Only the ranger Wu Liji accompanies the camera crew uphill and tells them to stay undercover. Carefully, they sneak up. Far above them, around 6,000 meters up, they see a small yak herd on a steep slope. The animals clearly haven't noticed their presence just yet. The air is getting thinner. Each breath provides only half as much oxygen as at sea level. And then they catch sight of them, a herd of wild yaks. Wooly G estimates that there are about 80 animals. He whispers so as not to scare them away. The crew feels tense. They hope they won't be spotted and will be able to film a wild yak herd for the first time ever. The lead bull, always ready to attack. In this protected region, the wild yaks do seem to have a chance of survival. They will only be able to survive if people allow them this habitat and realize how valuable the ancient animals are for the future. Wooly G discovers tracks made by two wolves. The wolves have been lying in wait for the herd shortly beforehand. The crew climbs further up to get a better view of the herd. Almost 5,000 meters. From further up, they can see that the herd is even bigger than they thought. More than 130 yaks are spread across the slopes in small groups. Further down, at the entrance to the valley, the lead bull is guarding the herd. The crew remain undetected. The animals don't realize that they are being observed and are completely relaxed. But this herd already contains one domestic yak, and the risk remains that one day, the wild yaks will finally be replaced by all the domestic yaks. But they're still here for now. Big, strong, hardy, and fast. And surprisingly clever, too. Because when Wooly G howls like a wolf, the animals demonstrate their sophisticated escape tactics. In an orderly manner, without a race of panic, the cows gather around their calves and escape further uphill. Oh. 
While the cows and calves are gaining height, the bull moves towards the valley in the direction of the suspected wolf attack. They certainly know how to survive. The last wild yaks, so important for China's Wild West.